Congratulations. I'm glad you guys could come out to enjoy our two newest exhibits. We have Beyond the Lens 18. Can you believe it's 18 years? And we have a beautiful exhibition of Missouri's Wild Horses, photography by Holly Ross. Hey, Holly. Holly, Holly, come on up a little bit and tell us a little bit about your Amy put me on the spot with this one because I didn't know I was going to have to speak tonight. So, there, yeah, um, I've been photographing the wild horses down in Shannon County since about 2016, and they've become a huge part of my life to the point where I was going just about month, uh, like eh, three times a month for a while. Um, two grandbabies have slowed that down, but I love going out there. And I was just saying I love being out there and sitting with them and connecting with nature because. You don't have cell phone service. You lose the hum uh, and the noise of the city, and it's just you and nature, and listening to them squeak as the the grass squeak as they chew it. There's just something really, really marvelous and spectacular. And I've described my first encounter with them to some people, and I'm just going to take a second and, and do this. But when I first int was introduced to them, it was a really foggy morning. And there were a couple of people that are in here today that were that were there, but um, we bumped down the, the road and parked and we got our tripods out because you really couldn't see 10 or 20 feet in front of your face and we all lined up along the edge of the field. And when we were standing there looking at each other, we could hear the horses start running toward us and the thundering of the hooves and it, we all got really excited. And then one by one, they emerged from the fog, lined up across from us. And I tell people that was the closest thing to a religious experience I'll probably ever have in my life. And that was the day that they became a huge part of my life. So, fantastic show here. Hope you enjoy. Fantastic show here. <laughs> I'll be here if you have any questions. Thank you, Holly. I learned so much from Holly about Missouri Wild Horses. It's just like, now I'm going to have to, that's on my bucket list of places to go now, is down Eminence and go visit the Wild Horses. So, our next guest artist it will be Ken Sexton. Ken, where you? There's Ken. He's uh, when Holly's show is over. Ken will be taking over her spot for the next show cycle. So, looking forward to seeing that show also. Um, our next upcoming shows um, are American Spirit, which is open to all media. So it's however you interpret American Spirit. So that can be positive. It can be negative. Put your imagination to it. Um, and then the show after that is called Dedication. So that's also open to all media. It's just artwork has to be dedicated to someone and have a short statement of why it's dedicated to them. Okay. Um, Beyond the Lens 18, vote for your favorite. You can, you can invite people to come in and vote for their favorite from the show through April 6th. The show closes uh, as the last day of the exhibition. Uh, the voting ballots, if you haven't voted yet tonight, or at the end of the exhibition by my little um, camera display that I brought in some of my old cameras that I have at home, <laughs> which maybe somebody could show me how they work. <laughs> you know, so that, uh, that old box one, I have no, I can't get it open. I'm like, I'm afraid I'm gonna break it. So if somebody knows how to open that thing, please let me know. <laughs> yeah, somebody might have had some money in it, that'd be awesome. Um, wouldn't it be fun if I found a roll of film in there and developed it and it was like JFK's assassination? <laughs> Because I got it in an online auction. You never know. <laughs> be awesome. Uh, but yeah, vote for your favorite tonight and invite people to come in. And whoever wins the People's Choice vote, um, that piece will stay on exhibition here at the gallery for the next show cycle and be featured on our website and social media platforms. Speaking of social media, um, all of the artists that are involved in both shows have um, done as a special little video of every piece has a video where the artist talks about their piece. So um, I'll be releasing those one at a time over the course of the show. So over the next two months, all these videos will come to come out and you can hear everyone talk in their own words about their own work, which I think is phenomenal. And our judge did a walk and talk with me, which I'm going to release over in the next couple of days online. So um, he didn't talk about every piece in the show, but he highlighted a few of the pieces that he wanted to talk about. So um, definitely worth watching. Um, Michael Daft is an, um, was an amazing juror. He spent two days jurying the show to make sure that he put the right pieces in the show. Um, he couldn't be with us here tonight for health reasons, but um, amazing guy. 
um, <clears throat> I've never seen somebody take so much time and energy and thought into juring, juring and judging the show. He brought along two companions for judging. They were here for four hours. Every piece was thoroughly investigated, <laughs> so it wasn't a quick in and out with a judge. I've seen that a lot, where like a judge will come in and go first, second, third. They studied every piece. He brought in uh, Mark Appling Fisher um, and uh, Don McKenna, who are both longtime photographers and um, instructors in photography at the college level. So, I mean, this was a really, really well thought out judging. So, you guys should be very proud of being in the show and getting awards. Uh, from Michael Daft, our juror for the show. First of all, thanks to Amy for giving me the honor of judging me this exhibition. Judging this exhibition, I hope I lived up to her expectations. Yes, <laughs> over the top expectations, <laughs> and fairly chose the photographs that are included. And many thanks to my two good friends who collaborated with me on the awards judging of this exhibition. Mark Appling Fisher and Don McKenna are both excellent photographers and thoughtful critics. It was a joy to work with them. The award choices are all the better because of their input. And thanks to everyone who submitted photographs, the quality of the work is high and it made our job of choosing only a portion of them even harder. And that's the way it's supposed to be. I approached the initial judging phase through in both instinctively and technically. A good photograph, like any artwork, should show composition, control, technical excellence, presentation, and heart. But ultimately, when calling the entries, my choices came down to using my instincts and experience. Choosing the winners was a process driven more strictly by stronger technical criti criticism, higher aesthetic stand standards, and again, by personal instincts and taste. The winning photographs all show mastery of the medium and artistic maturity, and, are, and all were unanimous choices of myself, Don, and Mark. The, pho the, photographers, the photographers that made the show, we we hope we chose wisely. Our first honorable mention goes to Lonnie Gatlin for Supercell. Spectacular storm shot. The lightning bolt elevates the shot from just spectacular to really spectacular. Excellent presentation and courageous shooting. <laughs> and our next honorable mention goes to Sue Wolf for Shrouded in Uncertainty. Um, shrouded in uncertainty, we're drawn into the frame and the subject. The composition and the presentation are excellent. Well done. And our next honorable mention goes to Carolyn Schleter for Windblown. Hey, Carolyn. Judge had to say a well-presented and well-shot portrait. The photographer was in control of their craft and their intentions. And our next honorable mention goes to Mike Winslow for Hairbird. Hairbird, while, while technically excellent, it has dynamic composition and is just plain fun. <laughs> Our next honorable mention goes to Lonnie Gatlin for Enlightened. Another storm shot that rises above the ordinary, the church, the juxtaposition of the turbines, the storm and the light all work together perfectly. So, award of tech excellence in uh, technical production. Um, going to Dan Zerlinga for Sunflower Under the Stars. This was a single shot with skillful Photoshop or Lightroom manipulation in the post-processing. Excellent composition, technical skills, and presentation. And we have one more award of excellence going to Mike Jeffries for Yosemite Falls, number one. Any one of the qualifying four shots from this photographer could have been chosen for technical excellence. They all show mastery of the medium. We chose this infrared shot in Yosemite National Park. So uh, third place goes to Paul, Gmer Paul Merrick for Tuttleblow. The photographer created something unique among all the submissions, a vibrant, dynamic abstract from a familiar subject, the Garden Glow of Missouri Botanical Garden. Job well done. <laughs> And second place goes to Lonnie Gatlin for Please Help. I gotta tell two stories before we go on to first place. So the judge called me earlier today. He goes, I've been thinking about it since judging. I'm buying that Please Help, go put a sold sign on it. Oh. And on top of it, um, 
Lonnie is donating proceeds from the sale of that piece to the local homeless here in San Francisco. Oh. Well deserved. And the judge had this to say about your piece. The photographer captured something unique here. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Had it been just a photo of a homeless or indigent person, we would not have considered it. But look at the technique, look at the composition, but mostly look at the narrative. The unidentified person and their dog suffer in the rain were behind them. Life goes on, ignoring the two subjects. There's pathos, there's humanity, and there's lots of art here. Kudos. <laughs> Lonnie and Mike were the two people in Beyond the Lens 18 that both had four pieces accepted into the show. So, um, my other story that I want to tell you, and it's cute because it kind of renewed my faith in humanity today. <laughs> this 10 year, 10 ish year old boy came in today with his mom. He saved up his Christmas money because he wanted to buy some original art. <laughs> so, he bought a Shirley Nocturne piece and he bought a six set of. Um, Rich Gordon's, the ones with the magnets that you can move around. <laughs> it's like, how adorable is that? That's like, hilarious. and I asked him. I said, art, do, you, do you do art? Do you make art? And he's like, No, I just really love looking at art. <laughs> he's gonna be an art collector when he grows up. <laughs> it's all awesome. So anyway, it was just very heartwarming to see. You know, that's my youngest art buyer. I think that. <laughs> so without further ado, our first place goes to. I get a drum roll. <laughs> Make some noise. Goes to CB Adams for Barn and Landscape. And the judge had this to say about your piece. At first glance, this seems like just another barn picture, but Don and Mark and I kept returning to it. There's excellent craftsmanship and presentation here, but more importantly, a certain elegance where everything was understated, but controlled and perfect. We all agreed it should be number one. Oh, wow. wow. Okay. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, enjoy Holly's show too. And that's it for tonight. Congratulations, everyone, on making the show and all to our all our award winners.